With the current political climate being what it is, many of you might be thinking to yourselves, to hell with it, I'll just start my own country. If so, you'd be joining the ranks of Somaliland, Transnitra, and the Principality of Sealand, to name a few. But what is the exact process of starting your own country? How can you do so legally? And how can you be recognized by the global community as an independent nation? Welcome to another episode of the Infographics Show. Today we're taking a look at how to start your own country. The first step to starting your own country will be territory. After all, a country can't really be a country without, well, a countryside. Unfortunately for you, all the prime real estate has already been gobbled up. So if you're seeking to form your new country peacefully, you're probably going to have to go remote. Really remote. Several islands around the South Pacific remain unclaimed by any sovereign state and are today just waiting to be made into independent nations. Although given their extreme remoteness, good luck getting basic goods and services there. Alternatively, you could look for small parcels of land around the world that rest between major powers, yet neither lay claims to. The microstate of Liberland, for example, was formed from territory along the Danube that neither Croatia nor Serbia lay claim to. Its size is only 2.7 square miles, but with a handful of citizens there's plenty of space to be sovereign. If you're looking for other available real estate, you could take a claim in Bir Tawil, which lies between Egypt and Sudan. Spoiler alert, it's a barren desert with no access to fresh water, or portions of Antarctica. If none of the available less than prime real estate appeals to you, you could always just build your own. Per international law, nations can only claim up to 12 miles past their shores. So if you had the money to, you could start dredging up the seafloor and build a brand new island nation of your own. The cost would be staggering, but it's an option available to you. Alternatively, you could try your hand at building a floating nation. Many architecture firms around the world have drawn up very realistic, if also extremely expensive plans for floating cities. While the technical know-how is certainly there, the capital is definitely not. Maybe you don't just want to declare independence from your home country, but from the surface world entirely. You could take the Bioshock route and build a city on the seafloor itself and declare yourself sovereign. Whether that's technically feasible with today's technology is a complete toss-up, but legally speaking, you would be well within your rights to do so. If you think it would be easier to simply dig down below an existing nation and declare your independence mole people style, that's probably not going to work as laws dictating just how far down national sovereignty goes aren't very clear. But given that the deepest mines in the world still fall under national sovereignty, you're going to at least have to go deeper than the Mpanang gold mine in South Africa, which is two and a half miles deep. At those depths, heat from the Earth's core raises the temperature to 100 degrees or more. So we hope you like it hot. The last option available to you would be the most obvious, declare independence or take territory by force. Historically, neither of those approaches has worked very well without massive support, and you can ask Germany about its very painful 20th century lessons in playing nice with your neighbors. You'll next need to determine a system of government. Are you going to uphold global democratic values, become an egomaniac dictator, establish a hereditary monarchy, or create a new theocracy? Perhaps you're looking to found a libertarian state where, well, we imagine not much of anything would actually get done. The choice on how to govern yourself and your citizens is completely up to you, but whatever you choose, you'll need a cohesive national government in order to be recognized by the international community and not just seen as a bunch of idealistic squatters. Your government should provide for the basic needs of your people, or not, but if you want to be recognized as a nation, it must meet one requirement have an apparatus by which you can interact with other foreign powers. You are free to skip on social services and even a military if you'd like, but a secretary of state or similar position is vital for being internationally recognized. Nobody says it has to be a competent secretary of state, just that you need one, so feel free to nominate your cat if you'd like. It will technically fulfill this obligation. So you've successfully declared independence from the world and established the kingdom of you with Mr. Sprinkles as your Secretary of State, through which all foreign powers must channel their diplomatic requests. What's left? Well, you're going to need to be recognized internationally as a sovereign state if you want to have a chance of surviving, and that means establishing diplomatic ties with other powers. If nobody takes you seriously, you may fulfill all the legal obligations under international law to become a free state, but won't be recognized as such. The best way to do that would be to send diplomatic envoys to nations friendly to your ideology, 
Taiwan, while still technically part of China, has for decades declared itself an independent and sovereign nation from mainland communist China. In order to protect themselves from forcefully rejoining a nation they no longer want to be a part of, they've garnered the support of powerful nations friendly to their democratic ideals, such as the US and much of Europe. As we've seen multiple times in the latter half of the 20th century, without these powerful ties, Taiwan would have been forcefully reabsorbed by China. Yet the threat imposed by its powerful friends has so far kept Chinese invasion forces at bay and respected Taiwan's sovereignty. Yet, though Taiwan is sovereign and seems to fulfill the obligations for the creation of an independent nation, it is not widely recognized as such due to Chinese threats against nations whom would do so. If Taiwan were formally recognized as a free nation, any future military action by China to force it into the fold would be seen as not an internal matter but a hostile invasion of a foreign nation, and thus prompt a global response per the UN Charter. Thus, China has threatened outright use of force against the island state if any nation, including the US, chooses to formally recognize Taiwan as independent. So for your budding micronation, the lesson to be learned is to make powerful friends, but if at all possible, avoid making powerful enemies as well. The best way to ensure you are declared a free and sovereign state would be to simply join the UN, which is not nearly as difficult as one might think. All you need to do, and we're not making this up, is simply write a letter to the Secretary General and request membership. That's it. There are no forms to fill out, no need to even outline what your nation is or how it's governed, just ask. If you're currently in the midst of establishing your own sovereign state, you're free to send your application right now to Ban Ki-moon, Secretary General, the United Nations, First Avenue at 46th Street, New York, New York, 10017. The next step, however, is a bit harder. Your application must be referred by the Security Council to the General Assembly, where it must win a two-thirds majority who all agree you are a peace-loving state and can carry out the duties of the UN Charter. Basically, the Charter states that you will preserve the rule of law, support human rights in your nation, and maintain global peace. So if you're looking to start the state of the murderous republic of murder, you're probably not going to gain entry into the UN. But nothing says you have to be part of the UN to be an independent nation. The Vatican City, Palestine, Taiwan, Western Sahara, South Ossetia, Abkhazia, and Northern Cyprus are all non-UN members, but recognized by at least one country that is. It'll certainly help your cause to be in the UN, but as we've seen, it's not entirely necessary. If you want to start your own country, you're going to need to know the law. Luckily, Skillshare has your back. With over 24,000 online classes like how to jumpstart a successful paralegal career to learn partnership agreements, you can brush up on your legal chops or start developing some new ones today. As an online learning community, Skillshare and its thousands of online classes can help you hone your skills or learn new ones. The first thousand people to click the link in the description will receive two months of premium membership absolutely free. Join Skillshare and start learning today.